Hello and welcome back in the seventh episode of the Evolution of Vipu. Some days ago I rewatched my first episode of this series. I saw all the improvement that I reached from that video, but uh, there is a thing that has not changed up to now. The terrain. In every episode the ground is this flat, green and sad rectangle. Let us modify it! The first idea was to subdivide the terrain in smaller rectangles, so I could regulate separately the height of each one of them to obtain a pseudo curved terrain, like in Minecraft. I play around with different settings to understand the best way to cover all the ground without superposition or giant holes. I found that with a 97 covering percentage I obtain a pretty good result. If you are familiar with multidimensional calculus, you know that you can define a proper function that links a two-dimensional coordinate with a certain output value. In our case, we can associate to each platform a particular height. For example, a test function could be z equal 10 times sine of x plus y, with an outcome similar to this. This method allows to move all the square in a blink of an eye, but always in the same position. One of the properties that characterize my simulation is its random behavior. I want that every time the simulation starts again, the terrain must change. How can I do it? Perlin noise! Perlin noise is a random but smooth function that pop up always in game programming. I will not stress you with details. You just need to know that there is this black box that represents the Perlin noise function. If some input numbers enter in this box, it returns a random number, but with a good property. If the inputs are close together, also the output will be close together. So this box can be used to create a random fluctuation like this, but never like this. And if you apply this function to the previous terrain format, the outcome is very impressive. To understand the best color for the ground, I made a color configuration system. It's very intuitive. If you change the red value, you can increase or decrease the amount of red in the terrain. If you change the green value, you modify how much green is present, and the same for the blue value. These girls long have yearned for your tender caress To bind our fortunes Damn what the stars are Rend my heart open Then your love profess A whining The habitat was bare at this point, so I must reintroduce all the vegetation. Maybe just reactivate the previous stuff was not enough. The problem is that previously the height of the terrain was exactly the same everywhere. Instead now it can change platform to platform. The issue can be solved easily by saving the location of each platform and then when I want to place something on a particular cube I must check what is its position and add its Z coordinate to the object before placing it. Now that also the apples are falling the simulation is returning to life. The next issue that I fought with was the shadow dynamics. Without a good illumination the scene had no shadow and appeared too unrealistic. Fortunately, I find a way to add them without require too much computation for Unity. Just impose all the environment, lights and camera as static objects. Do you remember the name of this series? The Evolution of Vilpu. And where are all the Vilpus? No problem, now I will add them. As you probably noticed, the creatures are not designed to move around in this curved environment. If Vilpu meets a hill, there is a high probability for him to get stuck. The reason for this are two. First, the camera point of the creature, or the position from where he can see. It's too low. It's like observing an environment not from your eyes, but from your legs. Second, even if Vilpu jumps during the animation, its box collider remains at the same height. At the end, it's like it doesn't jump in the first place. The solution for those problems are easy. Move upwards the camera and change the box collider position during the movement accordingly to the animation system. 
This is the moment where the peace was reached in the simulation. But peace is endurable. As I anticipate in the previous episode, a predator is going to collect some kills. <laughs> <laughs> to bring wolf food to life, first of all I made the low poly version of a wolf in Blender. Don't judge me, my mom says that it's beautiful. With Blender I also try to simulate the hue of a grey wolf. The blue eyes pupils finish the job. Maybe the legs are too bright. If I made them a little brown I think it will be better. On the right corner with its 20 cm high and 5 kg of weight, we can see the most loved fox on the internet, the big applause for Vilpu! On the left corner with its 5 m high and 2 tons of weight, here we have a wolf not well sized, Wolfu! <laughs> Let's return serious, the sides are completely wrong, I will adjust them. Next step was to program all the animations. We can found the tail movement, the head juggling, the growth, the jumping movement, and the reproduce mechanics. I transfer Wolfu to Unity, creating also a slightly black and bigger version to distinguish the male from the female counterpart. Finally, I spent the last day to reprogram the simulation in order to Wolfu to be our dream predator. As Vilpu does, also Wolfu starts its life as a young creature without knowing nothing about the world. Its first instinct is to find another creature to reproduce. Let me know if you prefer the Wolf Reproduction animation or the Vilpu one. It is also possible to click on the new creatures to understand the amount of life they have. When he is hungry, so his life bar is lower than half, he starts searching to a prey. Once a Vilpu is reached, it is immediately eaten. It's time to play! What will happen? I give you 10 seconds to understand with this rule who will be the dominant species. answer was Wolfu. There are still a lot of mechanics that I don't like, but I think I will fix them in the next episode. For now it's all, I hope you enjoyed this episode, the next one will be even better. See you next time!